NBA playoffs round one is officially underway. We got all the game ones done Saturday and Sunday. Not a whole lot of fireworks until we got to last night's Thunder and, and Pelicans game where that one came down to the wire and you could see Oklahoma City kind of working through what playoff basketball is all about in New Orleans. They do got some vets in there and they hung they hung tight with the Pels, uh, 94-92. Other than that, we got a, we had quite a few lopsided games, which always leads fan bases and the media to overreact to a, a one game of a seven game series. Which team do you think out of this weekend is coming out of this thing going? All right, no, there's real legitimate cause for concern. Hmm. I think the, the the Saturdays was fine. Well, and, and look, we can go game by game through this mm-hmm. and just see like the biggest looming questions. You have the Orlando Magic, which a, shoot. a point guard could not score a basket yeah. in in the entire. And when I say that, that's not like hyperbole. They did not have a single basket from a point guard. No, Cole Anthony went zero for seven. Uh, Fultz went zero for four. Gary Harris's two guard went zero for six. So. You put that together, it's a big old fat over. Their guards did not deliver. Ben Carroll was solid, 24-7-5 in his playoff debut. Uh, it took uh, Wagner a little while to show up. He eventually did. Markel but, Fultz also 0 for 4. Yeah. So their, their point guards, I was just saying, 0 for 17. I, I had Fultz in there. 0 for 17. Yeah. Terrible. 0 for 17. I think that series is going to even itself out. Um, it's, you know. It, it it is what it is, kind of a deal. Then you have Minnesota in Phoenix. And that wasn't even close. That that might have been the most disruptive game outside of like everybody knew Boston was just gonna wipe Miami off the floor. Yeah, like that everybody knew that. Nobody really knew Minnesota was going to beat the living crap out of Phoenix. Anthony Edwards was dominant, mm-hmm. and he was the guy that everybody would was hoping that he could become when he was drafted number one overall. He has. Every single ounce of dog in him, and he let Phoenix know every single bucket that he made. That's fun to see when mm-hmm. a guy is on one like that, and he's letting everybody know. But then it was a disappearing act for Phoenix because Devin Booker was non-existent, and basically Minnesota just said, "All right, KD, beat us," and he couldn't. He couldn't do it by himself. Yeah, I mean, they the Timberwolves put Jaden McDaniels on. Booker to start the game, and then they moved him over to KD, and KD kept doing KD things. And I was like, mm, keep him on Booker. And the, just, just deal with KD because you can't cover KD. Nurk got bullied by Gobert. Which is not something you typically see happen, but it did. 13-3 um, to three on the offensive boards. On the offensive boards. On the offensive boards. Second chance opportunities were left and right. And they, they murdered Minnesota. them on the glass in generals. 52-28. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I mean, they got mauled on the glass. Uh, a lot of that was because Rudy Gobert had twelve less rebounds than the entire Suns team. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was they they got the crap kicked out of them. Okay, um, Knicks Sixers and B. That was a, that was a really good game. Uh, Josh Hart making big big plays down the stretch. Josh Hart was probably the the playoff performer of the weekend. Uh, he was incredible. Boy. Just kind of the when you said Josh Hart, I just go back to how many names did we see this weekend of former Blazers that the Blazers asked far too much of Mm -hmm. when they were in Portland, but then you see them in in the in the ideal role for them, Mm -hmm. and they are thriving in those roles, playing really good basketball. Josh Hart was was the highlight of that. This yeah, Josh Hart had thirteen rebounds. Not too shabby. At, at six, four and a half. Not too shabby. Not too bad. And he knocked down some clutch threes, four of eight and three. Uh, the question there is, is is Embiid going to be okay? And I have, no. And if, if Joel Embiid gets hurt again in this playoffs, he enters like, he enters the Zion Williamson of, yeah. no. You can't, absolutely, can't unequivocally cannot trust him. Can't trust him. So, But that was a really good game, uh, especially down the stretch. Lakers-Nuggets was a bloodbath. The Lakers came out, and it was like, oh, the Lakers, see? I started seeing it on the timeline on Twitter, and I was like, we're really going to do this, huh? Wait till the third quarter. We're really going to do this. And then the third quarter happened, and 32 to 18. no coming back from and that. And it was over. Okay. And the thing was, are you going to get better games out of LeBron James and Anthony Davis? And the answer is no. No. LeBron ended up with, with what, 30, or, uh, 27, 8, and 6. AD had 32, 14, and 5 with four blocks. It's going to be a tough road to hoe for the 
for the Los Angeles so, Lakers. So, I mean, you look at it, they shot 50% from the field. They didn't hit their threes, but it's like, okay, cool. Because you look at what the, the Nuggets starting lineup did. You had 12 from Gordon, 19 from Porter, 32 from Jokic, 22 from Murray, 12 from, from KCP. And you're like, yeah, yeah, everybody did what they're supposed to do. Yeah. Welcome to the Denver Nuggets, folks. Michael Porter Jr.'s performance in that game just kind of highlights that uh, that man understands the level of chaos that his family has Mm -hmm. in it. To go out and play like that after what has happened this past week, brother gets put in prison Mm -hmm. for six years, killing a person in DUI. Vehicular manslaughter DUI. Then his other brother gets banned from the NBA for life last week, and he goes out and he played that way. It was like, ah, hats off to him, man. Mm-hmm. That was pretty impressive. It was. You turn the calendar to Friday, uh, Sunday where you have the Miami Heat after their play and win over the uh, Bulls on Friday. Get absolutely drubbed by the Celtics. That score was not indicative. The final difference was 20, and a big portion of that was made up in the uh... – Fourth in the fourth quarter. quarter when the game was long decided. Yet, what the hell? Why did Joe Missoula have his starters out there? Yeah, Why? Why? Why is Jason Tatum on the floor for Kayla Martin to run over? And there was an undercut. Brian Scalabrini making headlines because he said it during the broadcast for the Celtics because he's their color guy. He said, this seems like, he goes, uh, was it? Spolster calls a timeout at a minute 30. They come out. 30 seconds 30 later. 30 seconds later. Happens. Tatum gets under. Do I think it was a hit job? No. Do I think Martin absolutely meant to go in there with some force? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I've seen the, oh, he got pushed by Drew. But his trajectory don't change one bit. And it just is not. They don't have the They don't have, they the, don't have the horses to do it. No. I mean, they got, Porzingis just toyed with him. It was hilarious. All right. Uh, the Mavericks don't think you can play much worse than they did in that second quarter, especially, but that first half was absolutely Oh, his eight abysmal. points not good? The, uh, no. No, they get beat by the Clippers 109-97, and that was a first-half no-show by Dallas. Jason Kidd looked lost on the mm-hmm. sideline. like He was just like staring like... I think they'll figure Burr. that one out. They have the ability to because, I mean, you sit there and you look at that, 109-97, you can't play much worse than they did no. in that first half, but there are still questions at loom because Harden uh, looked like he turned the clock back. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was hitting He's everything. always going to be the wild card. It's just a matter when you get to game four, five, six, and seven when they actually matter, and then he disappears. Dame goes absolutely in bonkers in the first half, scores 35 as the Pacers scored 42 in that first half, and Milwaukee cruises to a 109-94 game. That, look, I give Indiana a ton of credit for fighting back, but at the same time, it was over. there was a massive chasm yeah. between the two there. Uh, but Pascal Siakam was the only one who looked like he'd been in a playoff game before because he was the only guy who'd been in a playoff game before. But with Milwaukee, can you you can't rely on Dame doing that every single game? I think right? you can. Uh, Thirty five in the first half, not in the first half, but I think you can. Thirty five in a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've seen him do that, but not like that. Not because that was will breaking at the beginning of the game. Well, I mean, it was like, well, he didn't do anything in the second half. Of like, did you watch the second half? Because they sent two at him the entire time, and Chris Middleton murdered them down the stretch. Yeah, that's what happened. And so I think that Indiana will come back with. Com- hey, they didn't Darvin Ham it. Mm-hmm. They didn't Darvin Ham. Darvin Ham saying no, we're going to save our adjustments for game two. Yeah. They came out of Justin. They actually looked a, a lot more comfortable, but they gave up Middleton. Yeah, right. And that's the thing is, I was shocked that they allowed T.J. McConnell to guard Damian Lillard. I was like, "You're you're gonna do this, huh? You're not gonna guard Dame with like I know you have a limited amount of number of options, but like if Dame is on the floor, Nemhard needs to be on the floor. Yeah, like that's. The this old, is the playoffs. It's not, well, we'll get this one back later. The old no. stopping with the white guy. Yeah, and I was like, n- no. <laughs> T- T- look, I love TJ. Great player. A great role player. Solid defender. This is Damian Lamont, Ollie mm. Lillard Sr. in the playoffs. What are you doing? Shout out. We, Portland got a shout out at the end. We gave a shout out, shout out to his son in the post game interview. Said he's watching back in. He Portland. also did that it in his, his post game press conference. He said so. He's talking about being in big playoff atmospheres. He said, "I've been in big playoff atmospheres. Portland, you know, shows out like I'm used to this. So uh, this is nothing new." Yeah. Yes. That's sad though. Dame still loves Portland. Um, and Everyone then, acts surprised by that. It's like he spent a decade here, guys. Come and, on. and then we have. Thunder Pels, 94-92. It was a close game. Great throwback game. We could have, yes, if the officials let them play like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're, 
Offense was optional in the first half, first oh, quarter. On that note, real quick, on the officials, with the exception of a couple, like, what the hell are you doing situations in, in through all of the games, the officials just said, we're not really here. Yeah. And I loved and that. And they set us up for that yeah. with the back half of the season. Mm-hmm. Post-All-Star break, everybody was bitching and complaining, mm-hmm. like nobody's getting calls, nobody's getting to the line, yada, yada, yada. I They just let them play even more in these this playoffs through at least the first couple of days of it. I'm here for it. I, I think it, it makes the game more entertaining, more exciting. Eight of the 16 teams scored under 100. Half. Wow. That's crazy. But all of those teams were on the road. And this is this is what we're looking at here. Not all of them. Cavs were at home. Cavs were at home. Ninety seven. Ninety seven. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have well, and the the Thunder were at home. Ninety four. Mm-hmm. Right. So as we look at this, and we just went through, there's legitimate cause for concern for a lot of these teams. Mm-hmm. Which teams should be the most worried right now in your mind? 